Uh, welcome, welcome back, everybody, and back to the Turfy Show. I am the John Man, and to uh, the, my lovely co-host over here is uh, Miss Mary. How the hell are you doing, Mary? I am well. You're well? That's good. That was kind of a weak introduction for me. And my co-host for today is Miss Mary. How the hell are you doing? I don't know. Are you not feeling it? No. I wanted like a real amp, you know? I wanted like... That's what the music's and for. And to my right well, is I mean, my magical, magnificent, perfect wife, the marvelous Miss Mary. Well, the problem with that yeah. is, one, if I say to my right, I mean, no one's going to see that. Or to your left. You could have said to my right or to my left. Which is funny because this is totally not the kind of wife I am. Like, I'm not a showy wife. Like, I stand on my own. I don't need you to introduce me. I run the room. Uh, well, but yeah, in apparently. this one instance. She just wants me to be her hype man. That's all she wants me to do. She just wants me to hype her up because. Maybe you, know, you make me watch too much wrestling. So I expect, like, are you ready? <laughs> I mean, I guess I could start being your hype man a little bit better. You know, I could do. I got Paul Heyman the shit out of this. Actually, no, he's really good. I can't do that. He is really good. Like, he was a theater kid for sure. Yeah, he he has to have been. There's no way I could like write something that good. Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Man, I do like me some wrestling. I know. That's why I like in my mind. I'm like, come on. This is your like one time to be able to like. My one time. It's not like I have like any other time to hype you up at all just this one time i don't know on this one podcast i'm clearly not that interesting to you anymore why do you say that i'm curious you don't listen to me What's hey kcb what do you mean i don't listen to you kcb is in the house happy saturday what are you doing with your day i like how you i mean i love that our friends in here right now but i'm asking you a serious fucking question how do i not listen to you anymore I was telling you something very serious today, and you clearly were not paying attention. Stuck in the house. Do you guys have snow? Oh, uh, there's a s- snowstorm I'm, warning. I'm so jealous. We were supposed to have a blizzard yesterday, and all fucking day, I was waiting for this blizzard to happen. I was, like, ready. Ready. I'm, like, ready to be snowed in, and we didn't get any snow. So I hope that you guys get a ton of snow. Although there is a little bit of snow here now. Welcome, welcome. Ru is it Ruben? Ruku's beer? Ruku's beer. Ruku's beer. Welcome in. I can't see that far away. John has the screen a little wonky right now. Thank you. Welcome in, Michael. Oh, you left us. Although I we do have as much snow as when you were here last time, Kayla. What's going on? Oh, for some reason it's playing like you and me at the same time. It's weird. I don't know what's going on. Oh, can you guys hear us okay? In our like our chat our live chat, can you guys hear us okay? I mean it should be fine. It's just not segregating our channels. But anyway. no snow yet here in the UK. What part of the UK are you in? <laughs> I did drive in the snow today. London. I want to come to London so bad. It's my dream to get over to that side of the world. I want to do London, Scotland, and Ireland. I want to do like a whole like fail swoop trip. A lot of people say London's a lot like New York. Is that true? I'm curious. If so, I'll probably love it because I love New York. What's up? Is that better? What's going on? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I mean, you can still hear hear me. It just wasn't separating us out. Oh, okay. But apparently I don't listen to Mary anymore. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a theme of the night. But at the end of the night, there's going to be drama. I don't know if there's going to be drama, but okay. so. Just Mary and he I knows how to get in the office chair is the problem. Mary <laughs> our dog right now is trying so hard to get in the chair with John. And I work from home. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Okay. This is I don't work from home. And this is what's happening right now. These dogs are pretty much tattletelling on every little fucking spoiled thing Mary does throughout the day while I'm not home. Like this little one cannot comprehend why I'm not letting him in the office chair right now. 
He's like, why, daddy? Mom does this shit all the fucking time. Oh, for sure. I definitely, like, if I have a break, like, if I have a minute. I fully expect, like, this is what, like, you could be talking to clients on the phone. And I kind of expect that dog to be there, like, in your lap watching your computer screen no so i don't i don't let him up that often it's probably like once a day maybe is it yeah maybe twice a day like because he's big and my office chair is literally a child's office chair and so like there's really not enough room for both of us so i really don't let him up that often and we have basset hounds for those of you that don't know yeah and then i opened all i did was open my breakfast the other day from the package and the dogs <laughs> came running. I'm like, you fuckers are tattletelling on me. So it's it's one thing, right? So if I open something, you know, they'll be like, oh, what's dad eating? What's dad eating? Maybe we could get some. But if fucking mom o- opens something, they fucking run, they sit down, they look at her, and they're like, okay, where's mine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yep. And they're very patient with me. And they're like, with dad, they don't know. They're like, mm, are we going to get a morsel? Or are we not going to get a morsel? But they know what they have to do to be able to get one for me. What, buddy? Come here. Come oh, here. yeah. They're both good dogs. But there's definitely a difference in parenting between mom and dad, in my opinion. I feel like I'm the, I'm not too stern with them, but <laughs> that fucking dog. Mary definitely lets them get away with a lot more as he's like chewing up shit in this room right now, just living his best fucking life. I mean, where the fuck is he finding those? Like we have like this foam padding stuff and one strict one, one pushover. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. Did you guys not just hear me saying no? I mean, it was very faint and very quiet. Well, I was clearly, I was being firm. You said no with a smile on your face. That's the problem. Well, it is kind of funny. You, you don't say no with like this resting bitch face look. You say no and you smile like no, because dad's not going to like this. Do I really give a shit? No. <laughs> no, I don't give a fuck if they tore that up. If it would make him happy for an hour. All right. I don't give a shit. Why do you think I give him boxes when you're not home? Yeah, but that's just not digestible. Like we just made our dog throw up because he uh. ate a fucking stuffed arm. Yeah, that was rough. I tell you what. I'm sure parents, like regular parents with like humans, human children, I'm sure like they have their struggles and all. But you know what? Dog parents have their struggles too. Mm -hmm. You know, like you just can't stick like a dog to any old regular babysitter. Absolutely not. I'm very strict on this. I mean, and if I had a kid, I'd just be like, hey, whatever family member or stranger wants to hang out with my kid for a day. Just keep them alive, please. Just keep them alive and I'll be back. But my dog, no. No. Like, I for sure would drop my kids at your parents all the time if I had human kids. If we had kids, I would. they would live at my parents' house. They would not live there, but... The majority of the time, They would yeah. go, yeah. for sure. I mean, I've changed my dog's food more times than I changed my own food. Great. Uh, agreed i mean i grow i go through the same shit too like all of a sudden there's explosive diarrhea what do you have to do well you have to clean it up same as a regular human kid mm, yeah you don't well i guess you clean up the food this morning yeah i mean the only difference is not in a diaper yeah our poor little our little one poor guy he has severe anxiety and he works himself up like if we leave him he'll work himself up or he can't get down the stairs either. So, like, if I'm in a meeting and I have to leave him up the stairs because he's ran himself up the stairs, right? Like, I've packed his ass down and then he decides he wants to go back upstairs and then I have to go into a meeting and he can't get himself back downstairs. He'll work himself up to, like, literally explosive diarrhea because mm-hmm. he is so upset and distraught because his brother can come down. So his brother comes down and sleeps on my couch and is like, this is the best life ever. So, you know? and then it's a rough afternoon. So, I mean, it is a rough afternoon, but uh, I've noticed there's, there's two people in the chat room that both have brew and beer in their names. Ooh. So they must like brew and beer. So yes. enlighten me. What's your guys' favorite beer and brew? Agreed. And same goes for Casey Beeb. What's going on over there? Yeah. And then back to my original story. All right. So Mary's telling me the serious story earlier in the day. Okay, and 
if you've listened to this podcast all 12 episodes and then the the hundred that we had before we deleted them all you might know that i'm a little bit of a squirrel right so mary, mary and i are talking we're at a bar top obviously there's tvs and stuff and i'm like i'm not actively watching tv but i'm kind of looking around looking at the beers looking at the tv and mary starts telling me like this this serious story this event that happened in her life and this is from my perspective i'm sure mary will well she went here in a second and like she's telling me and i'm listening i I know everything she said and then on the screen because there was college basketball playing on the screen there was like this fucking there was just like regular basketball players right he wasn't that big and then on the screen, there's like this fucking ginormous fucking giant of a man. He wasn't that big. And I was like, look at this fucking dude. He wasn't he that is big. fucking huge. Yes, he was. He was like, it made like all the other people on TV look little, like little people. And this guy was a fucking giant. And I just happened to be like, in my mind, like, holy fuck, this guy is huge. So and I said that to Mary. I was like, look at that dude in the white jersey. He was fucking huge. Obviously, I interrupted Mary's story, and she's mad at me now. Well, I was telling you something very serious, and you haven't asked me how the follow-up went, or what was said, or... I did. I asked you all those questions, but, like, at that point, you didn't want to tell me, because you were already mad at me. Yeah. I was was genuinely... It's 24 hours after all these events happened. You were telling me at at the bar... I know. And, like, I just so happened to see, like, a fucking huge dude on the TV. Okay. And, like, I was trying to, like, poach and get questions from you, but then you didn't want to tell me. I, I was genuinely, like... Only because I got mad. I know. But I was genuinely interested in what was going on, but at that point, like, I, I couldn't ask. Mm-hmm. I was already done. And I didn't mean to. You have a YouTube channel. I can't see that way. Ruckus Beer? Rukus Beer? Okay. I review uh, beer from all over the world. Okay, sorry, you guys. I, the yeah. screen. Oh, there we go. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. So Thank you. Can you. So we just did. Well, not just, but we in September, October. Anyway, we went to Brewfest in All American Brew Festival in Denver. In Denver, and tried beers all over the country. Mm-hmm. It would be fun to do a all over the world one like that. Yeah, it would. Welcome, Father Brian. Well, how we'll, are you? I'll follow you on Instagram too, by the way. Anyway, so that's my story. And I didn't mean to make Mary mad or upset or act like I wasn't trying you to You guys, pay this is going to be drama for the rest no, of the No, I just need day. to get it out now. That way it's not drama. Because the only drama for here on out is going to be from you. Okay. Today I've tried beer from over 100 different countries. That's pretty cool. That is cool. I wouldn't say Mary and I are like the Cicerones or anything like that. No. But we definitely enjoy beer. We do. And we love like sampling beer too, like mm-hmm. getting the notes. And we're doing well. We trucking along. We made friends yeah. in the state we are in now. So that's been nice. It's been a nice reprieve from only family and obligations. So it's been good. We're yes. we're doing good. We're making it through, making it mm-hmm. through winter. Yeah. How are you guys? I know you said you're making it through. How's things going? Are you guys still doing podcasts three days a week? Give me your deets and I'll shout them out. But, no. Mm-hmm. Taking a break again. It's tough. We we try to be consistent, and the last time we, oh no, oh that's terrible. Uh, well, at least they figured out what's going on. Not that that is a silver lining, but that's really hard to find out what's going on to like specifically target anything towards that. We try to be consistent, but it's just so tough. Like life is. Yeah. I mean, we're down to the pretty much the once a month, the once a month show. Yeah. Well, (laughs) Thanksgiving was our last podcast, you said. Yeah. So, I mean, we had one. No, 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 not Thanksgiving. Christmas. Before Christmas. Okay, so Christmas. Before Christmas is our last Thanksgiving. Since we started back up, we're about once a a month. But. Yeah. Uh, Well, and even without anything going on, that's how hard we, like, of a time we're having staying committed. I can't even imagine trying to 
work through everything you guys got going on. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, in a perfect world for us, like we do it during a weekday instead of a weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, but I don't know. Like, I feel like now between you and I, Mary, we're like the second I get home because you get off like an hour before me, but you have to, you have to let the dogs out. You have to play with the dogs and you have to do all these like mandatory obligatory things. Mm -hmm. Like once you get off work and then I'm off like maybe an hour, hour and a half later. And by the time I'm off and we actually eat dinner, there's no fucking way we're doing a podcast, you know? And we're doing it early today. Like, this is actually the earliest we've done a podcast in a long fucking time. Yeah, and it's because we have plans tonight. Yeah. So. So it, it, it's tough. Like, you know, like, I'm I'm a dreamer. And I, like, like ideally, you know, I would love to do this, like, three times a week. But I can't. Well, and we had a conversation. And this is why. So we, you got, I think, for sure, Father Brian will know and KCBs will know our, like, long time. OG from three years ago follow us throughout our journey we deleted like 150 episodes and then we started again and then we deleted more yeah and then we restarted again it's just because we got toxic we did we get we got toxic hello becca and, and we said hey like maybe we don't utilize the podcast for like airing our dirty laundry and frustration so if you guys want a good laugh there's no bars hold humor give the stewie griffin sunday show a listen all right you guys set nine central time go check it out texas time yep texas time central and we said we don't want to bring like we just don't the podcast was for us was turning into this bitch fest and it took us like just saying okay like not that we won't share the bad things because you guys know we have no problem letting you guys know like what's going on in our life but we just didn't want to like keep beating dead horses if that makes sense i don't know we we kind of got in this rut of like fuck this fuck that i don't know i i hope that makes sense we not that we don't ever like share our like bad attitude it's just more of like that's what it like started becoming and so we were like okay we need to like yeah i mean about this we don't want it to be instagram to where the the only thing you see is the happy highlights all right like we still want it to be real but we just don't want it to be but we also want it to be you know we want a good mix a good mix between negative and positive so it's tough yeah that's why we're only doing it once a month then we don't have time to do shit i know I mean, I mean, it's kind of a weird, I think the last year and a half between our friends in Seattle and then our newfound friends here and even some of our newfound friends in like New Mexico and shit like that, you know, you want to be able to spend time with everybody, you mm-hmm. know, like what's the point of having friends and then our friends in Oregon, yeah, you know, she comes and hangs out with us all the time. Which, and it's tough because as an adult, if you want to have friendships, you have to actively engage and foster those relationships. And so it it's a chal- it's a challenge. Yeah, I mean like definitely we try not to like show anything fake, but we just didn't want it to just only be the negative side of life. And that's what it turned into for a minute. Well, it and it did. And that's like kind of like the climate, not to get too far into anything, but the climate of the United States is just super negative. Yeah. And then we were just kind of falling in line with like let's just be negative and negative and it was super easy to do. Right. Which, I mean, we'll tell you the bad shit. We don't give a fuck about that. It just is like when you're like just rehashing every conversation. Anywho, that's the the whole gist. Is Casey Beep still in here? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. She's probably just listening. But, you know, having adult relationships, right? Like when we were in our 20s, we just had people in and out of our house, like randomly all the time. You know, and it was 20s, like super early 30s. And it was just always like a party fest, right? They're going to get that. But like having like real meaningful relationships in when you're a little bit older as an adult, you actually have to try a little bit harder. Like our friend Casey, she comes and sees us all the time and we have like a good meaningful relationship with her and we have good meaningful relationship with some friends in Seattle and now like our new friends here in where we live now. But it's like, you have to put in time. It's not one of those things that you could just show up to anymore. You know, does that make sense mm-hmm. to you? 
So that that does take time away from like the quote unquote free time we would have, you know, making this show. But I think it's worth it because there's a lot of times where the most important thing in life is human connection yeah. in reality. And thank you for the birthday wishes and happy birthday to both of you. Since we totally failed and missed your birthdays. Both of you, actually, because we missed. Yeah, because we're each a week apart. Yeah, I believe so. So, yeah, happy birthday to you guys, and too. And speaking of birthdays, Casey Beeps, we need the details. So we our do. dear friend Casey Beeps in this chat, you guys, this year is her dirty 30. It is. Dirty 30 in March. And... We gotta do something. She's special. gotta figure out what she wants. Yeah. I know she's a baby. I know. We're old as fuck. <laughs> she's really my child at this point and not my friend. <laughs> yeah. I'm just kidding. The child that we party with. Yeah. And hang out with and watch the weather channel with. I know. But she is a baby. Mm -hmm. I don't know. When I hear her age though, sometimes I'm like, oh, like you're fucking young. I mean, not that we're like super old. I'm thirty. I'll be thirty six. Right, fucking old lady. <laughs> and I don't know how many gray hairs do you have? Four dates. Oh, uh, how many gray hairs do you have? Oh, so many gray hairs. Like it's so bad, you guys. It is so bad. Like it. Honestly, I'm kind of pissed off. Can I just vent for a second? Okay, so my natural hair color, my whole life has been like, ew, you have mouth brown, and oh, like that's your natural color. My whole fucking life, right? So I bleached my hair, dyed my hair, done everything up. And before I say what I'm going to say, I do love Taylor Swift. But that fucking bitch. The fucker. Has made natural mousy brown cool. And you know what these motherfuckers are calling it? <clears throat> Old money brown. You know what the problem with that is? <clears throat> I can't rock my natural old money brown hair now. Like, I can't be like, Oh, I got this shit. Like, this, I have this naturally, right? Like, I have that color natural. Like, God gave me that. I have old money brown. No, because now I'm old enough that I have fucking gray. Yeah. And not just a little bit either. <laughs> not just. And, and Taylor Swift is is what she is. She's she's awesome. But no, she definitely earned her. So what her hair color is what they're calling old money brown. So like. <laughs> In the hairstylist world, that so like that's like what they're calling her color of hair. I mean, but I mean, I I would say like once she starts going gray, and then that will be popular. But but by that time, you'll be so fucking gray, it won't even matter. Oh, for sure. Like, does it does it actually even that much older than that bitch? Because when when we were I'm just kidding, when She's we were bitch. in high school and stuff, it was like fucking blonde, blonde. And then when we were out of high school and into like the 2010s it was like fucking white blonde mm -hmm. and then it went gray blonde and then it was always fucking blonde through like most of even your like ombre it, like yeah. my nat natural natural hair's never been in and now it is yeah and like through most of your youth it's always been some type of like super blonde and now fucking it's your natural hair color i know i so here's the thing is if i was all silver i'd be fine but it's like just enough, like gray to like I can't be blonde because the gray shows up too fast, and I can't be brown because the gray shows up too fast. So, like I just wish it were enough to like well, rock. Why don't you just go like remember that one year where you were like pretty gray blonde? Why don't you do that again? <sighs> that is so much work. But that it, like is blends so, in well though. I know, but that is so much upkeep. Yeah. No one know what colors my because no one has seen my face. There you go. See, I mean, it, you know what? One of these days, my hair is going to start growing, and I'll have like this full lock of hair, and then bald will be in style. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John's about ready to. I mean, he's already got a little gray, but he's about ready to go like full gray in his mustache. Yeah, it's getting there. Can you check on them? Yeah, I can. Oh no, I thought they were under here. No, they're upstairs. Oh, they oh they're fine then. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm about ready to go full full blown gray. Like I'm holding on to, because for years my brother thought I dyed my beard because it's just so dark. Like I have a really dark beard. It's always been dark. 
and I've never had gray. I think the last three years I've had a total of two gray hairs that I could count. And maybe I have a total of like five or six. Yeah, but he's about ready to get like a whole... But like my mustache is about ready to go bushel. like full-blown gray. Because mm, it's turning red. You know, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to some salt and pepper. Don't do a whole Colgan and dye the trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, John would love to do a whole Colgan, I think. Like in his mind. No, I would... No, I wouldn't. I mean, I think in my mind, I think it would be funny. And I would just do it as a parody of a parody of myself. But then it's like, I don't want to fucking wash that much hair. Like, when my hair gets, like, this long. Mm. Mm. I know, Mary, huh. I had a conversation about this. Mm-hmm. And, and it's probably because of the trauma that Mary gives me every single time she's in the shower. Huh. That she's bred me into thinking that you can't wash your hair in a decent amount of time. But once my hair gets, <laughs> like, a quarter of an inch on the sides, it's like, I got to cut this shit. Because it looks like shit. Like, honestly, come on now. It's not... We also had this conversation today, too. We did. And I usually, I, I don't know. I try to cut it. I try to upkeep it. But you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm not very good at it. Yeah. Just, just clip it. Oh. I think it's a good call. Because I was like, I'm just jealous that men can take such a short shower, right? Because my showers are like, especially in everything shower. Ooh, it just takes too long. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. And plus, I and you guys can judge me if you must, but I definitely like. I don't really care to shower. I mean, I like to shower. I like to like be clean, but I definitely have to force myself to shower. So, like the fact that my shower takes so long too. I mean, a lot of the time, it takes me more time to shit than it does to shower. To be quite quite honest, I think it's a strain. Hold on, the dog has something he shouldn't. You could grab Muffin from my office. Oh, the doggy has something he shouldn't. Can't rush the shit. No, for real. But, you know, John can get in the shower. He's in and out of the shower for like five minutes max. My shower, especially if I'm washing my hair, like solid 20. Because, you know, like you gotta, you got a whole process. What is it? Thing that you didn't give I took it from him. <laughs> but you're also like, oh, I don't give a shit if it. Well, I didn't. I didn't think he had like tore it apart. Yeah. You're an hour. Yeah, like it takes some time. It takes some time. Yeah, it is rough. And then though. if you got to shave on top <laughs> of that, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to take that long of a shower. It's way too long. Yeah. Well, Kayla, you suck. Yeah, I mean, you also have short hair. She does. I'm not even sure you shave your legs. You shave your legs, Kayla. I don't know. Is that something you ask people? I don't see why not. I mean, you could ask. Okay. Not in the winter. Not in the winter. Okay. Smart. So during the summertime, your showers go from the length of a song to the length of a song, two songs and a half. Well, you're a fucking shower every day. So you probably fucking, <laughs> yeah. you scrape that shit fucking every single day. Mm-hmm. You're in the shower, I'm sure. Yeah. I, have a good night or morning. I guess it's morning over th- on that side of the world, right? They're 12 hours ahead of us. Where are they at? London. Yeah. They're seven hours ahead of us. Seven hours ahead. So I guess good night. Yeah, good night. Because it's afternoon. I'm used to podcasting at night, so it would have been morning. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> showering is one of those things. I mean, I've been, it's not like a New Year's resolution or anything that I had because. I try not to do New Year's resolutions because I'm like failing. But one of my things is like, I do want to be healthier. And I think to me, like being clean a little bit more often is a little bit healthier. You know? Yeah. Seven hours ahead. Yeah. I was right. You got it. You got Um, it. So I think it starts there. It starts being, you know, like shower a little bit more often, John. Like you fucking got this. It takes you fucking 10 minutes. Just shower. Be a little cleaner. Neither of us are like, big shower, to you, you guys. You, like, just full transparency. You lift boxes. You work hard. You know, you sweat. Just shower a little bit more often. So, that's one of my things. <clears throat> Eventually, I'll get into working out. You know, but I've been saying that for fucking 16 years. So, you know, maybe it'll take me another 16 years. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> I did go 
on a good stretch where I was working out like every single day. And then I got sick as fuck for like a week. And I was like, nope. You're like, I'm done. <clears throat> yeah. Well, because I, I lost it. You mm-hmm. know, like you're motivated. You're doing it for a week and you like start to do it as a habit. You're like, okay, I'm a shit. And then I'll fucking work out. And then, you know, I'll d- go drink coffee and get on with my day, you know? But then I got so fucking sick that I was like rolling out of bed, like barely alive. And I was like, no, no, no. And then, then you just get out of the habit. Yeah. You know? That's fair. You know, so, no, come here, baby. Because working out is like one of those habitual things. Like you have to like do it every single day or you're not going to do it. Yeah. No, 100%. Come here, baby. But I will say I did it for a week and I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> I love that you're a while is a week. <laughs> it was like a week and a half. I don't okay. know. It was a little bit. <laughs> I mean, no judgment for yeah. me. I fell off a long time ago and have not even made an effort <laughs> <laughs> since. Well, uh, you know, it's funny about resolutions since we're in this new year. And and maybe it's just us. Like, maybe you and I are the problem, right? I, but I, I feel like if you do these resolutions, you're like, oh, I'm going to be healthier. I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to do healthier things like every fucking buddy else. Like, Mary and I could say that, and you know what we do? We'd be like, you know what? Fuck this shit. One day in, let's just fucking eat junk food every day. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's how we are. We're like, let's set a goal to be healthy, and then three weeks into it, you've been more unhealthy than you ever have in your entire fucking life because you said you were going to do something and just do completely opposite. Mm-hmm. It's like we're fucking cancel culture or something like that, <laughs> except for it's with us. Yeah, it's, we're the problem. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and that's why I don't like setting goals because it's like I set a goal and then I feel like my body tries my hardest to do the fucking opposite. Mm-hmm. So you maybe know? you should set a goal to be as unhealthy as possible. Yeah, I mean, I've never tried that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I really haven't. Oh my gosh. I mean, that might be a good plan. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the first week, just be fucking un- unhealthy as possible. No, my then- goal is to not shower for two weeks. And then you shower every week. Well, that's what I shower now. So <laughs> sometimes, well, I, I shower more. I, I, I don't want to say shower. I clean my body more in the winter because mm-hmm. I shower like I clean my body like twice a week. I only wash my hair once a week. Mm-hmm. I mean, you do bathe like in the bath often. Mm-hmm. Like I wash my body. Yeah, that's a good point, Mary. I've never thought about that. Just do like what you want to do, but set your goal to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should try that next year in 2025. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I was thinking about this, like, okay, so, you know, like, obviously, self-care in air quotes is, like, this whole, like, I, I, it's almost been, like, glorified. It's almost a trend. But, like, something that I, I don't know, this was, like, kind of an epiphany I had is... Like, for people who are neurodivergent, which I clearly am, I don't even fucking shower. Let go. You, Bruno, stop being a dirt, jerk. Like, sometimes self-care is not the glamorous, like, go get a pedicure, get your hair done, look pretty. Like, sometimes, like, for me, when I say I'm going to work on my self-care, it, it is truly, you're going to brush your teeth every day. You are going to take a shower more than once a week. You are going to eat some substance today because toast at 3 p.m. is not eating for the day. So like a lot of things for me, like it's not like that glorious self-care. And so I have to think of self-care in a different manner. Like I have to think of self-care as like, no, bitch, this is the bare minimum to take care of yourself, and you need some self-care. This is quote-unquote normal, so let's get up to quote-unquote normal. Right. It's like, so my self-care is not like this glor- glamour, like, and I love bath bombs and that kind of shit, so don't get me wrong, but... I mean, you get in funks, and then all of a sudden, like, you're off track. I mean, I think everybody does, right? Well, not everybody, but some people do. It's really easy to slip into a path of not being able to do the bare minimum. Yeah. But my but my whole point of this, it wasn't like to feel sorry for me. It was like I think that our messaging around self-care is like glorified 
when I think a lot of people just need to know, like, hey, like, maybe self-care isn't this sexy thing that you have yourself up for. Maybe self-care is something that, like, you need to force yourself into. Because, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I fucking love being clean. Mm -hmm. Like, I like once I get in the shower and get myself clean, I'm totally fine. But, like, thinking of the, like, the mountain of tasks which really like most people are like oh i'll get in the shower for me i'm like okay so i need to go in the bathroom i gotta brush my hair i need to brush my teeth i have to get undressed i'm gonna be cold i gotta get my water right then i gotta shampoo then i gotta wash then i gotta exfoliate then i gotta shave then i gotta put conditioner in then i gotta rewash my like where that conditioner touched or whatever Mm -hmm. and it's like this whole like i don't think like oh i'm gonna get in the shower like I'm going to go in the bathroom. I'm going to get in the shower. Come out. Then you get out of the shower. Then you got to put lotion on. Then you got to get dry. Then you got to get your clothes on. Then you got to get your clothes to the wash. Like, it's like this whole thing. Like, I don't think of like, oh, I'm just going to shower. It's like, oh, I got to do all these other things that I think is overwhelming. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Am I making sense? You are. You are making sense. So I really don't care to shower. Well, yeah, I I think... (laughs) I think it's really easy to get into like the the horrors bath routine. Oh, pits and pussies. Pits and pussies. You know, wash your pits, wash your pussy, mm-hmm. and get it done with. You know, it's yeah. like horrors bath it all fucking day. Pits and pussies, pits and pussies. And hopefully you guys have seen that comedy special yeah. to understand it's funny. Yeah, Burt Crusher. Go watch him. He's awesome. But anyway, like it's easy to get in that routine of like not specifically that but like cutting corners mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. which you know it's fine to do a horse bath every now and again oh once a week <laughs> yeah whereas <laughs> like fuck i horse bath once a week what are you talking about Pits and i mean i bitch. really do shower like twice a week but yeah. i only wash my hair once a week clicker oh i didn't know i had the clicker yeah. they count it takes me three days to decide when i'm gonna take a bath exactly trucker trucker baths <laughs> i love that yeah trucker baths yeah yeah, yeah i don't know I, th- I i feel like i don't know i feel i feel like 2024 will be a good year you know depending yeah, we'll you know I, I feel like there's always been like what i like about 2024 so far is there's not a lot of hype around it no right yeah now. everybody's just like setting expectations They're, like super low you know mm-hmm. like they you got yeah, it's a le- an election year, and that'll be weird or difficult or whatever it is. But it's not like 2020 because when 2020 came, the ball dropped. Everyone's like, "This is gonna be the best fucking year ever," you know, like hindsight 2020, blah blah blah. You know, 2020 vision, motherfucker. And then it was like the shittiest fucking year yeah. ever, right? 2024 is the year of reality. I feel that. Like people are just coming in with realistic expectations. Yeah. I mean, whether you like it or not, we're still dealing with the ramifications of like the COVID thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're only a couple years removed and like things are still. Well, we're four years removed, but. Well, four yeah. years since it happened. Like two years, year and a half, two years since it was like lifted and mm-hmm. people could go out and do shit mm-hmm. fully. You know, so we're, you know, you're a reality. That, that's a good one. I like that. I like it. It did change the world. It really did. And as much as people are like, I, 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 but I also like, I feel like there's so much negative connotation with the pandemic and what it did to the world. But I also think there was like, you guys are going to come at me and it's fine. But I think there was a lot of good that came from it too. Yeah, no, definitely. We're like finding our feet, figuring it out. Like, I think the good thing, at least in our house, there was some good. Like, we really like reestablished ourselves our relationship we reevaluated like so many things and we like got to take a break from the rat race which we n- never would have been able to do yeah the pandemic is an extended honeymoon and yeah. I, I think you're able to cut a lot of waste out too Mm-hmm. You know, oh yeah like wasting your life wasting yeah. you know your budget your budget wasting your friends like just wasteful yeah. things we and, got to see like who really mattered to us and who like who did we miss and who didn't we miss uh-huh. 
And I that sounds ugly, but it really is what it was. Okay, do we really need to be eating out this much? Do we need to be like doing this many adventures? Do we need to Adventures, yes. Adventures, yes, but like it, it just made us like take a hard look at our life and reevaluate it, and we never would have got that opportunity had we not been forced to slow down. Because as you guys know, like I'm a busybody. John was a busybody. Like we were always out and about doing things. I worked two jobs, like by choice, not out of necessity. It was by choice, and I mean, thank God I did because that's what got me through the pandemic was having those two jobs and money saved but like we were just like always out and about and doing things and eating out and partying and like we had a big group of friends and it was like eh, you know maybe we don't like everybody in that group of friends <laughs> yeah. you know like it, it was really like a like being able to see people's true colors i think like since the pandemic our, <laughs> our friend group went from like it downsized like 98 percent. oh yeah and i think that's part of why like we've ha had a difficult time meeting friends here too and why we're being so like choosy it could be because i only want like real valuable friends like i don't want like if i'm gonna spend every weekend of my life with you you know or even three weekends a month with you or whatever it is i want you to be a person that like brings value to my life and i want to bring value to your life mm -hmm. you know and like you know i and i and i and i think about this and like because i i always think big picture you know like would they be friends i'd be comfortable bringing like my best friend kc to me Around. you know like because if they're not then they're no fucking way they're gonna be my friends then they're not our friends then they're not our friends i don't want to go down that rabbit hole because i'm still so triggered yeah yes just about the gym and the bathroom thing yeah. and like so i i, I agree with, with yeah. what you're saying you know it's just like if i can't bring my other friends around because if you think that way like you are obviously not my fucking friend yeah you know exactly like if you are any sort of discriminatory to the people that i love then you can fuck right off mm -hmm. so we've had them you know i think we've yeah. We've done a pretty good job of vetting our friends, and maybe that's why we, it takes so long to meet new people. Yeah. And plus, we're fucking weirdos, too. Like, we are. we are fucking weirdos. Like, we love board games and video games and movies and, like, we, but we also love, like, going out in the Jeep. And, like, I'm obviously, like, come from the beauty world, so I like to put my makeup on and be ready and... We like to go out and about on the town, and we we are a little bougie, and like we like really yummy food and good drinks, and and we're also like creatures of habit too. Like once we find a spot that we love and we like, and we like the people around there, we'll keep going there. Right. Like there's this this pub that we go to probably every other weekend, and we're Disney adults, which is like a whole another like subsect, which I didn't realize it was so weird to be a Disney adult. Yeah, I thought it was normal. I thought it was normal too. It's not. It's not. <laughs> no. Oh, and we like musical theater, and but we'll also go like shoot guns, like mm -hmm. you know, we're just fucking yeah, weirdos are low key Buddhas. All peace and love. Yeah, like. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say all love and peace, but uh, yeah. you know. I mean, I'll definitely. Uh, come on now, I, I'm white trash, so there is some. <laughs> You still got that blood in you. I've mellowed out in my old age, though. Mm -hmm. I would say. Like, I've mellowed way out. I think so. I think, uh, I don't know if it's mellowed out or if you just learn how to control it. You don't react as fast as you used to. You kind of step back, think a little bit, and then react. Yeah. So the difference between being the age I am now and the age I was in my early 20s, in my early 20s, this would fly. Mm -hmm. in my late 30s words fly and i honestly think words are worse than this sometimes it can be uh i've been hit by your fist and your words and sometimes those words they're <laughs> fucking they're hard to recover from because i will script it in such a way that it will just i will put that dagger in your heart and i will twist it and it's going to be serrated 
And you're going to think about that fucker for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Like, so I don't want to be that way. I mean, I think I'm still kind of the same way. I'm not as reactive as I was when I was in my 20s. I don't use my words very well. You're still as reactive. You've just learned to like take a breath and remove yourself from the situation. Yeah. I thought we were going to get kicked out of an airport. Because, but I was proud of you. You, you maintain yourself. You, you are just better about moving, removing yourself from the situation now. Mm-hmm. I just gotta leave, and I think that's what's like hard because sometimes I get really pissed off at work, like because I just can't fucking leave work, you know. And I'll send out some fucking stupid emails. I'll read them three times first though to make sure they're okay. I'll write it, and what what I usually do is I usually write my email in Word, mm-hmm. and I'll just leave it there. And once I come da- calm down and like got distracted, I'll come back and read it. And if it's still good to send, I'll send that fucker. Mm-hmm. But if I feel like it's too harsh, then I'll edit it, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and then send it. So that way I don't like write it in like actual email and accidentally hit send. I always do it in Word first. There you go. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I let people learn the hard way. The lessons stick with them that way, for sure. And so this couples with, like, learning who I want around me. I'm learning that if people solicit those sort of reactions from me, that I feel like I need to (coughs) have such a volatile response, then those probably aren't people I need in my life. I mean, and that's why I'm kind of glad we, we moved, like, 45 minutes north, to be quite honest. I mean, because, you know, when you're in, like, Idaho, the difference between cultures in this area is pretty big. And it doesn't take that far of a drive. 30 minutes. It doesn't take that far of a drive for it to be, like, one way or the other. Yeah. You know. But. Drama buffers are lifesavers. Oh, yeah. Well, and I'm glad we didn't. Because we could have. We. I don't even want to go like down that path but really we could have lived closer to either of our families and our life would look a lot different Mm -hmm. right now we'd be loaded yeah i mean we would be (laughs) but i i couldn't hang there i have too much of a strong opinion about my opinions yeah so we'd be loaded we'd be loaded (laughs) Not uh, really loaded. We just would have a lot more disposable income. Yeah. I mean, that would be nice. I like disposable income. Mm-hmm. But we don't. So yeah, but here we are. we're happier. <clears throat> so money can buy happiness. It can. I think so. You know, I think, you know, like they always say money can't buy happiness. But I think money definitely buys you tools to become happy. <laughs> I'm not going to read it out loud, but for like a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and here's the funny thing. I, and I'm going to say this and it, and it's fine. We are Idaho left Washington, right. And I don't feel like there's a place we belong politically. Mm-hmm. And that is a challenge. If I have to pick one or extreme or the other, you guys know what I'll pick. <laughs> I like the green. <laughs> I I just think as a whole, it, it's because I love people and things. And just because you're different doesn't mean that you're any less of a person. Yeah. I mean, both sides have it fucking nuts. Oh, you yeah. You know, like the, the extremism of both sides are, and that's, that's what it is right now. There's no middle ground. No. You know? But you're not wrong in your comment, Father no, Brian, at not. all. And w- when we talk about extremes, that's as extreme as it gets, especially with my immediate family. And, and maybe that's maybe that's our problem because we went from like one extreme to the other. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We went from Seattle to Idaho, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, mm-hmm. like probably two of the most extreme states in the lower forty-eight. Well, I mean, Texas is pretty bad. I mean, Idaho and Texas are right there with yeah, each other. You're not wrong. You know, like, and this is what I tell people at the end of the day, we're all just trying to feed our families and live our life and survive. And none of this should really matter. You know, honestly, I didn't think it was going to be as big of a culture shock as it was. Like I grew up as redneck, white, 
trash gun tote in trailer park living trash as it came. So I honestly did not think I would have the culture shock that I did. But it also was that like a validation of like the experience of I experiences I have had and like the growth I've done as a person and like my acceptance and like understanding the world. <clears throat> but yeah, I was shocked. I was like, you don't really think like this, right? Like you don't really think I'm ruining your state because I moved back here. Like, oh, they do? like you know that I was born and raised here. Like I own property here and I have my whole life. Like, and you think I'm the a problem? Like, so it was shit like that that it was like you you honestly think that we're the problem here? Yeah. Uh, it's it's crazy. We've never been more discriminated against. Ever so moved here with out of state plates. Yeah, it's insane. It, like I am like like we had like legitimately like people like yelling at us because we had washington plates I, like, it, it was wild it's like you know like we have like five acres in a house somewhere else down the street down the street like know? my birth certificate says you know you know just because we have 30 washington minutes plates away it's like we we moved back so fuck off <clears throat> but regardless you know? of that too it's like us moving to your area or anybody moving into your area is not costing causing the price of milk to go up like you do understand that right like the price of milk going up is what this thing called is inflation it's not me moving here and property rates have gone up all over the country yeah there may be a little bit of an influx and i don't know the exact statistics so somebody can fucking come at me if i'm wrong but property value going up is called inflation. And this is why people tell you to buy property because it gains value over the course of your life. Yeah. Property has never not gained value except for like the crashes four times and crashes. And even then, if you bought it beforehand, it's not going to crash to what like before you bought it. Well, in some instances, if you bought it like super crazy high, but if you bought in 2008 and you survived the crash, guess what? You pretty much doubled or tripled your fucking value. Exactly. And then here's the other fucking thing. Go, we, ha we have too many people in this city. Well, I don't think that these people from out of state bringing their like childless millennials and their two dogs are the problem. I think it's you fucking Mormons having six to 12 kids and all staying in the same area. That's the fucking problem. You're populating this area. <laughs> yeah. It's well, not us. Well, and like, I think what oh and sorry i'm and, triggered and this is like <laughs> th th this is fact right if people move to this area from out of state they're gonna bring different views different opinions and different ways of thinking which means different ways of spending money different ways of building businesses small businesses small local businesses. Eco economy and like like mary and i we're childless millennials with two fucking dogs so what do we do with our money that we wouldn't spend on that we would spend on kids. We go out and we support local community. business. Maybe one day Mary and I will open up a business and it will will support local community. It's like we are spending money into the community. If more people like Mary and I move here, that's job creation, more money into the community, more money for roads getting done, more roads for building projects, more roads for Well, we like our potholes. Well, fucking enjoy your potholes. I do not. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pay my fucking taxes to get that shit fixed. Right. I, I but that but that is the mentality, and it's funny to me because I'm like, you fuckers all have like six, eight kids that all stay in this area, and then they go on missions, and then they bring people from other countries, and that's acceptable. But you look like three hours up the road, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And you have like this amazing fucking town called Bozeman, Montana. And it's, it, it's so cute. It, it is expensive. But you know what they have? They have this main street that's a mile long with a bunch of shops, boutiques. Every fucking store is full. Every fucking store has a shop business. in it. Every, there's something in every fucking place. And people go there, they shop, they spend money, and that is supporting the community. It's supporting the locals. It's supporting the people that live there. Because everyone goes there to shop, drink, eat spend money and have a fun time 
And that's what this place could be like, Mm -hmm. you know, if people would just get off their high horse and let people shop, spend money, eat, drink, and build new businesses. Mm -hmm. Because people, you know what? People like to spend money. And even if they don't like to spend money doing like community activities, like the horse drawn buggy, you know, like that's a good family activity. Like that's a small business in the area. They like things to do, right? They like, maybe they have kids and they would like to have a really good starter job. Right. Or a park or a theater. There's, you know, it just brings more to the economy. It brings more to the community. Anyway, but that's all way too dollars, logical to have a more conversation. tax dollars for the city so they could spend it on their Mormon temples and their their mm-hmm. whatever they want to spend it on. Their so. zoning. Their zoning. We have that. a county that is a dry county here. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's not completely dry. Oh, it's close to dry. Mm-hmm. You have to... Have, you. So, it's a county to where, like, if you have an establishment that serves alcohol, you have to serve food. But not food in the sense of a taco truck or something outside the establishment serving food. You have to physically have a kitchen inside the establishment to be able to serve alcohol, which which only franchises can do. So there's no small business in that county. You know, there's this the M word that made it so this part of town can't pretty much can't have any alcohol in it. But. That's fine. We'll let the Mormons go over there and everyone else over here will have their tea and eat it and have some beers. Exactly. But I guess enough of that. We've ranted too long about uh, local economics. Yeah, I don't know. I got triggered. Anyway, so you're not wrong. (laughs) You're not wrong. uh, Because while I say I'm Seattle, right, it still is like those are all very like social... I don't even want to say they're liberal views. It's very like it's social views. views. Like honestly, like that's a these type of views are I don't know. I guess almost capitalistic, right? You yeah. want if you're a capitalistic person, obviously you have to capitalize. You have to build business. You have to have people work in the business. You have to do all these things. I don't know. And here's the thing too: is it takes everybody from every walk of life to make a community run, like. You have to have people that want to be a lunch lady and that that works for their lifestyle. You have to have the gas station attendant. You have to have the business owner. You you have to have these people with different skill sets and different open availabilities and different aspirations in life. Like, yeah, the lunch lady may do that because that works around her kid's schedule and she's bringing extra money in, right? And so I think in communities like this everybody gets stuck in like that poverty mindset and they don't realize that it really takes the whole community and it takes people from all walks of life to make the community run and function well and they're pissed off that it's like all right all these washingtonians and californians are taking all the good jobs it's like you could have applied well my job isn't even in idaho it's not you know, it's like you could have applied. My job's in Illinois. You, you could have done whatever you wanted to do. You just didn't. Hundred percent. And you I know, have no college degree. I have no education. I have I had no skills in the field I went into. And you know what I did? I applied. Yeah. I uh, to be fair, I sent out like 150 applications. I made finding a job my job, and I put my energy and effort into that. But like. I don't know, but a lot of these people, gas gas station clerk, just thinks that them sitting there doing nothing is going to make them CEO of the gas station. Right, but then there's people that are like, take pride in that. They're like, this is perfect for me. I love, like, remember, There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Just don't expect more if remember you don't Rory, want more. Do you remember who Rory is from Chevron? Yes. That bitch loved her job. Oh, she loved it. It she did graveyards. She was happy about her customers. She did it so she could watch her grandkids during the day, but still have extra money. Yeah. And it's like I'm sure Casey Beebs remembers Rory, the the salt and pepper old lady that used to smoke way too many cigarettes at Chevron. You know, <laughs> I loved her. Yeah. Anywho, you guys, we went down a rampage. I'm sorry. We definitely you triggered me, Father Brian. I'm kidding. <laughs> but, it's, good, it's good conversation. 
But you, I mean, you very much so clarified and then I extrapolated. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. But it, it is, it is it, at its core. That's what it is. So, yeah, it's just culture shock. I, I don't know. I don't know if it's childhood trauma. I don't know if it's my own, like, inability to settle. But I cannot live and die here for sure. Yeah, Mary and I were talking about this earlier, and I just, it's hard. I don't even leave my house, so I shouldn't be so, like, this. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll probably leave eventually, you know? I I don't see us staying here forever. No. Who knows? I mean, we could be here another 10 years and then leave. No. I don't foresee it being 10 years, but who knows? I think it's just a stepping stone. We'll find out. I do like my house and I work from home. So I'll die here, but I live on the internet. I feel that. I think I think it's a lot more than just where we are. For me, it's proximity to the entire family and the I mean right now it has its ups and downs. Like downs like we live here. And we just explained the downs. Yeah. And ups, though, like, we, I love my house. We love our house. And, like, I work from home. Believe it or not, like, we've traveled more living here than we have any, like, than we did in Seattle. Yeah. But we do, ha- but that's a good and a bad because the downside is we have to travel to do the things we want. Well, I don't know. Versus Seattle, we just went to Seattle and it was there. Yeah. Pro- exactly. And that's the thing. Like, proximity to drama is the thing. And I'm still figuring my shit out. You know, as far as like, I mean, and technically, you don't really have anything here. Like, the only, I mean, you have family, quote unquote, but not immediate family. Yeah. You know, all your immediate family's gone. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm the only one with immediate moms and dads mm-hmm. and brothers and sisters here. Mm-hmm. Like, you have a, a brother here, but he still lives three hours away. Mm-hmm. You know, so that, that's not close. But I have emotional connections to like physical dirt here. Yeah, you do. You do. And I'm not discounting that, you know. I don't know. It's weird. It's fu- life is fucking weird. It is. I mean, there's always points to where you like lay awake in, or lie awake in bed and you just think. You never lie awake. I hear you snoring all the time. Well, I'm teasing. It was when, supposed when, to be funny. When the dogs wake me up at 4:30 in the morning and I can't like go back to bed, that's when I lie there. I don't know. You think and ponder and reflect. Then you then you just go to work and forget about it all. And then you go to work <laughs> and wish your life you know wish you were born into royalty or something. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, for a minute. But then it's again, interesting. then again, I'm just like, well, you know, like maybe I'm the problem. Maybe I'll just never be completely happy. You know, no matter like what, where I grew up, how I grew up, or if I grew up like poor or rich, like I'd probably never be completely satisfied. You oh, know? for sure. I'm, I'm like the problem. Fucking Alexander I Hamilton. Just I'll never be satisfied. You know, I know this <laughs> like about myself, at least. Yeah. Always striving for the next thing, you know, <laughs> do better, be better. Uh, and, but it, and even for me, it's kind of interesting, though, because I've always been that way. But it used to always be a financial thing. And now it's more of like a. No, I'm not saying I'm not happy. Yeah, I'm just saying I'm never satisfied. Hello, welcome in. And welcome. Now it's more of like I'm still like striving to do better and be better as a person, as an individual. Not necessarily. Well, that's a lie because I'm still doing it in my career now too. So <laughs> I, I, I just tried to gaslight myself. I gaslight myself every fucking day. So <laughs> you know, I don't well, know. Well, Mary likes to compare me to the dog. If the dog is not getting any attention, he just walks around the house until he finally finds someone to pet him, or he goes to bed. And Mary's like, that's exactly how you are. That is your personality to a T. One room to the next to the other room to the the pouting and then the next room and then the pouting and then the another room and then he finally lays on the couch and then he just stares at you. And then someone flinches and I get up and I do the same thing over and over <laughs> yeah. and over again until... <laughs> yeah. No, you are Canton. Mm-hmm. The, like, restless energy. It's that constant fight or flight. I'm always trying to flight or fight i don't know i know although i would like my body to understand that when i'm writing an email that's not when fight flight or flight needs to kick in like 
<laughs> I would like my body to understand the difference between me actually needing to fight or flight. Maybe my anxiety. I don't know. I wish it could like recognize. I saw this thing and somebody was like, what's the worst part of having anxiety? And in and you know what? I honestly think the worst part of anxiety is for me is that I am a logical fucking person. Like I can work through any problem. I can figure it out. And when I'm in the heart of anxiety and I can feel my body just like tensing up and like all this, all the shit, right? Mentally, I like can talk myself out of it, but I can't talk my body out of it. Mm -hmm. And that shit pisses me off. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, all right, the fight or flight while, while writing an email. And like, this is what goes through my mind a lot of time is what if I fight this computer and this computer takes flight? after i'm done with it <laughs> and just fucking throw it across the room <laughs> john is more like anger yeah i'm more fight i'm not i'm not john really a flighter only knows how to express his emotions through anger he doesn't know how to express any other emotion other than just anger yeah i guess not and that's why i think therapy would be good for you not like not to like control your inner anger but to be able to identify your other emotions that surface as anger for you yeah I know what those emotions are based upon how your anger comes across because I've been with you long enough. Because it's angry, but I'm never angry. I could be sad and I just fucking am angry and angry. Yeah. Or it's I could be depressed angry. and I'm angry. Every every emotion to you I'm is angry. anger. Mm -hmm. And I think identifying like what the actual emotion is and then how to address that versus just fucking getting angry. I mean, but I'm pretty good at keeping my anger within myself. Like there, I only have a few outbursts. Well, I'm not concerned about your outbursts. I'm concerned about your internal self. Like, I'm concerned about you. Hey, my, inter my internal monologue keeps me in check, all right? Well, <laughs> so does mine, and she fucking <laughs> gaslights me. <laughs> Mine's like, John, you realize if you go two steps forward, all right, you might not have a job. <laughs> oh, so mine I'll, is a fucking so how about you take to me. Yeah. <laughs> Mine eggs me on, actually, sometimes. <laughs> to be quite honest, I, like, my internal monologue... Yep, emotional cockpit, crockpots. ...will just, will sit there and go through every single conversation I can have with this person, which, like, gives me, like, super anxiety, which I guess turns into anger. So, like, I've already had, like, 30 conversations with one person, how I'm going to say it, and, like, 30 different outcomes of that conversation. We all know. We know. God. We all know. I don't need. I don't need to explain this to anybody. We're a disaster. We are. Sometimes I'm like, are we good for each other or are we bad for each other? <laughs> I think we're good. I mean, we've Just lasted kidding. 16 years so far. We're probably the only people that fucking stop us from jumping off the ledge. I know. You Which know? is funny because if somebody listens to this and I'm like, your anger, like the, I don't know, it's so funny too because like John is like one of the sweetest kindest husbands there ever could live and i'm not saying that because he's sitting with me like he literally like they, he like can totally back this up she's lived with us like she would never like why but he really is like one of the sweetest kindest humans on the planet and so it's funny that like well people hear anger and they pro they automatically probably think abuse right uh, and that's what i'm trying to like say is that it's funny because that's probably like the context that's coming through mm -hmm. if you don't know it like, if anything, I'm me. Yeah. Hi. It's me. <laughs> I'm from It's Me. Right. Copyright strike. Bam, bitch. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, my friends, we do need to get these doggies walked and get ready for our evening adventure. We're going to a pizza party. Yeah. We're going to have Costco pizza and uh, dessert charcuterie in a historical house. Get some beer and cocktails yeah. and wine. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Nice to see you guys. We hope to see you soon. Uh, we'll try to be around a little bit more, we'll, which is a lie. We'll, we'll see you in a month.